It's the bye week. It's essentially the midway point of the season, and I am going to go through and give out my awards for the New York Jets halfway through. Hey, what is going on? I am Matt O'Leary back with another video, and today I am going through and talking about some of my awards for this New York Jets team as we go through this. Before we get started today, I wanted to mention where you can follow on social at Matt O'Leary NY. Also, please make sure to check out the Just Jets podcast. New episodes drop every single Wednesday. Call in and get your responses in. I'm excited to hear what you guys think. All right, first and foremost, we are going to get it started with the MVP of the New York Jets. And just so you guys know, I'm not going to repeat. So my MVP, whether they're on the offense or defensive side of the ball, they are not going to be my pick for Offensive Player of the Year or Defensive Player of the Year. I feel like that's too easy. I want to get more names involved. You can, if you want to repeat, you let me know your choices. We're going to go MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, Coach of the Year, and Comeback Player of the Year. Uh, so if you want to follow along and uh, you know get in on the action, or if you want to just jump right down to the comments and do it now before I give you my answers, uh, that's fine too. But my MVP is Quinnen Williams. It was a a huge year for him going into this season, his year four in the NFL. And obviously he did not at this point receive a contract extension. And I think most people wanted to see some level of consistency because there were flashes. There were times where Quinnen Williams looked really, really dominant. And then there were times where he was very, very quiet. Well, he's been dominant from get go day one, immediately, immediate impact, seven sacks in nine games. 17 quarterback hits and 18 pressures. We know he's elite against the run and he's finally developing into his own as a consistent pass rusher. He leads interior defensive linemen in sacks and I think he is the best interior defender not named Aaron Donald this season. Aaron Donald is in a class of his own with all due respect uh, to, to Quinnen. There's just there's no touching Aaron Donald. But after that, I think Quinnen Williams is the second best interior defender in football. So he is my MVP for the New York Jets for his impact on this defense. Offensive player of the year has to be, in my opinion, I know he's hurt, but Elijah Vera Tucker. What he was able to do for this New York Jets team in an absolute pinch was nothing short of heroic. He started at three different positions on the offensive line. He played right guard at first and was very, very good. Then in a pinch, they played him at left tackle. He held his own. And then he moved over to right tackle before suffering a season-ending injury. This guy, in very early in his NFL career, has played four and started at four different positions. Left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle. That's unreal. He, the only position he hasn't played yet is center. And if he was asked to, I bet he would be able to do it and do it at a high level. Elijah Vera Tucker, home run pick. So happy Joe Douglas landed him and can't wait to see him back on the football field next year. Defensive player of the year. Now, again, keep in mind, I'm not doing repeat guys. So if I have someone else uh, winning a different award later, that is why. Hint, hint, defensive rookie of the year. Let's think. But I'm going to go with DJ Reed for defensive player of the year. Everyone wants to talk about Sauce Gardner and more on him later. That's my hint. Uh, but DJ Reed has been absolutely fantastic. He is playing like a top 12 corner in the NFL, maybe even a top 10 corner. Uh, so far, he's allowed a 52.2 reception percentage, 244 yards, and Zippo, zero touchdowns allowed as a member of the New York Jets. This secondary is absolutely fantastic. I like Bryce Hall, and I like uh, Brandon Eccles, but the DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner additions to this team has really taken the defense to the next level. I will happy and happily admit that I was wrong about the Jets cornerback room. These two guys really make life so much easier for the defense. They've been absolutely fantastic. Offensive rookie of the year. I'm going to go with Brees Hall. And by the way, just wanted to mention that you could invest in Brees Hall if you want to. Obviously, he, he's not playing anymore this year, but now might be the time to get in when his number is still low. And then next year, 
Uh, he can, when he comes back and makes his return and continues to play at a high level, you get your best value over on Mojo. You can check out the link to sign up down below in the description and get in on the fun. But for me, Brees Hall, what he was able to do as a rookie is nothing. It, it's just we haven't seen a playmaker like that on the New York Jets in a very, very long time. And the fact that he was a rookie makes it that much more impressive. The first two, three weeks of the year started a little bit slow, but man, did he really hit his stride. Ended up with 463 yards on the ground, four touchdowns, another 218 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown in seven games. Five touchdowns in seven games. Jets don't have players like that. Uh, if you watch the Jets, which if you're watching this channel, I'm sure you, you are well aware of the Jets over the last few years. One, they don't score. And number two, they don't have dynamic offensive players. That changed with the additions of Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. Brees Hall was absolutely fantastic. He has a slight edge to me over Garrett Wilson. Wilson could still be someone who could have, you know, a monster, monster second half of the season. And he was really good. But I think the dominance that Brees Hall showed really impressed me. So he has the slight edge there. As for defensive rookie of the year, you know who it's got to be. Sauce Gardner, 43.5 reception percentage, 189 yards allowed, one touchdown allowed. Things you just absolutely love to see. This guy is already nine games into his career a top 10 player at his position, if not better. Some people have made the case that he is top one. I would not put him there yet, but he is trending in that direction. What he has done is is awesome. It's it's awesome. And Darrell Rivas is getting in on the fun, saying that he is the future of, uh, of an island for the New York Jets as a cover corner. You, you love to see it. He's a freak. As someone that size should not be able to move the way that he does. And his speed to make up ground is... Tremendous. Tremendous. And for coach of the year, I'm going to go with Robert Sala. Yes. I, and for this one, I'm doing it a little bit differently. Uh, you could, I could have picked an assistant here in, in my, uh, in my version of it, but I wanted to go with Robert Sala because I think a couple of things, obviously early on this year and at the end of the last year, there was a lot of criticism on him because of uh, how poor the defense was and his in-game management. But in his second year as a head coach, he has taken a huge step forward in the right direction in terms of game management. I have very little gripes from him so far this year for how he's managed games. He's gotten aggressive when need be, for instance, going for it with the fake punt on fourth down against the Buffalo Bills. Um, and he just has this team ready to play every single week. He's a player's coach. We knew that much about him when he, A, when he first came here, and B, throughout his time last year, even though the Jets struggled only winning four games. But the turnaround has you have to give Robert Sala a ton of credit for this turnaround, and uh, he's done a tremendous job. Hopefully, the Jets have both Robert Sala and Joe Douglas here for for the long haul. I, I really hope that this works out with those two. It's trending in that direction. And it's super exciting. Last one for me is comeback player of the year. Who is someone who I think is deserving of this award? Two guys came to mind, but I'm gonna go with Carl Lawson. On this one, he has four sacks in nine games, 16 quarterback hits, 11 quarterback knockdowns, and 18 pressures. The Jets haven't had an edge rusher this good in a long time. Yes, the numbers don't necessarily jump off the page, but he was probably going to finish somewhere around, if he continues at this pace, somewhere around eight sacks, um, somewhere around you know 40 pressures roughly, which is which is pretty nice. I think you sign up for that. Um, obviously, would have liked to see him get to the double-digit mark, and he still very well could, but he, in the first three games or so for the Jets, struggled a little bit. He was a little MIA, but I don't know if it was just recovering from the Achilles or getting back in the groove or getting up to game speed, but really over the last six games, he's been very, very good, and I anticipate that he continues to improve as the season goes on. So those are my awards. You let me know yours in the comments down below. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I am Matt O'Leary. Subscribe here if you're new, and I will talk to you next time.